Hey, Hound Dogs, I'm David Hankins. And I'm Paul Hankins. And welcome to On the Air with Power Squared, a weekly look behind the scenes of what we hope will be everyone's favorite comic book, Power Squared. Uh, this week we're doing something special. We're having an interview pre-recorded with Sue Price, an actress and a fan of Power Squared. Yes. Uh, we realized after the recording that uh, you can't hear us for the first minute and a half, but you can hear her fine. So we're, we're going to join the interview in progress with Sue Price. Uh, well, I grew up in Illinois, um, moved out here, and um, you said you wanted to talk a little bit about the movies I was in. Um, before that, I was, yeah, before that, I was into bodybuilding, which is the whole reason I got into a movie. Um, How did you get interested in bodybuilding? That was, was that in college you got interested, or? It was, yeah. Yeah, I went to college and got, you know, how people gain a lot of weight and sit around doing too much eating and drinking. And, Things like that. So I started going to the gym to try to combat that. So um, just kind of got into bodybuilding from there. Okay. And that's a big commitment, isn't it? I mean, it's like hours and hours at the gym or? It's, yeah, it's pretty big. It kind of takes all your spare time. And then once you start to compete, then it's really like everything, you know, your whole diet, your whole lifestyle. Right. Um, so how, how long did you do that? Uh, I did that for about 12 years or so. so from about age 20 to maybe to about 34. Okay. And uh, how f how far did you, I mean, you were professional. I mean, are, did you win prizes or things like that? Um, yeah, I won, uh, I won my college uh, contest and I won a regional, um, like, what do they call that? Midwest uh, area show. Uh, then I went on to win state shows and nationals, and then I got up to Miss Olympia. So I competed in the Miss Olympia twice. Wow. And I fourth place and um, a sixth place and then fourth place. Oh. And so well, what caused you to retire from this after 12 years? Uh, I just figured I had gotten kind of as far as I could go. Um, you know, to get fourth in the Miss Olympia is a pretty big deal. And, uh all the women that I was competing up with at that level were like much taller and much bigger. And, um, you know, so I, I had gotten really lucky, uh, and, you know, obviously done my homework and came in really good shape, but I didn't know if I would place any higher than that considering how big the women were starting to get. So <laughs> I just kind of wanted to retire before I got too bulky and, you know, everything like that. And it's not, it's kind of an obsessive sport that's not super healthy. Uh, in the long run. So, um, you know, I had kids and eventually just kind of went another route. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so you got into, uh, was it because of bodybuilding you got into the movies? Yes. Uh, when I was in the Miss Olympia in 94, there was a an agent, um, a director that was kind of sending a guy out to the shows to scout out women who were built um, like bodybuilders to be in a certain movie. And uh, so he kind of did some kind of um, screenings with me and a couple of the girls that I competed against who were actually friends of mine. Uh, and he had us audition and read some lines and, and run and do some act active things to see how we moved on camera. And so he ended up choosing me, which was really, I was surprised. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so then, um, yeah, Albert Pune, and he had done Nemesis 1. So then he did Nemesis 2 and 3, and I was in Nemesis 5 like a couple of years ago, which Dustin Ferguson directed, and that was in a whole different direction. It was my character as an older person mentoring a younger person to take my place. So it was kind of like, kind of cool thing. So um, how many, so you've been in, I, I think, eight films total? Uh, not that many. I think it was, um, let's see, Nemesis 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, and then I was in one called Robo Women with Dustin Ferguson. Um, Wasn't there a Robo Woman oh. too? Sorry? Was there a Robo Woman too? There was supposed to be. We were hoping so, and um, he hasn't he hasn't done a script for it yet. Oh, okay. So, yeah, but my my good friend Donna Lee Heising was in that movie. She played Robo Women, and she's such a good actress and a great nice person to work with. So. I'm kind of hoping that they'll do a number two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so do you still have um, <clears throat> acting ambitions or have you, is that just something you do on the side or? Yeah, just something that kind of happened to me. And so I never thought of wanting to be an actress. Um, 
or really, you know, trying super hard to get roles or getting an agent or anything like that. It just sort of happened. And, um, you know, if the same directors approach me again to be in sequels or have bit parts, I'll, I'd be, you know, happy to do it. But it's not something that's like a big, a big, uh, big part of what I want to do anymore. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fine. Yeah. Um, and I see you're wearing a Queen t-shirt. I know that you're really into Queen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't hide it very well on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> My friends who are sitting here with me are Queen fans as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> I sort of recognize one of them from your uh, Instagram. Um, so, ah, there you go. So I assume you saw Queen live several times. I know you see Queen Nation. Um, but we go see Queen Nation whenever we can because they're a really, really good tribute band. Um, they're about as close to seeing Queen as you could possibly get. But um, as far as seeing Queen with Freddie Mercury, I never got to do that. So uh, I'm totally bummed about that. But I've seen them with Adam Lambert uh, now as they're touring currently or up till this year when they can't now. But, right. Yeah. Um, that, and that was just awesome to see because you're actually there seeing – Brian May and Roger Taylor of Queen, and they're playing with a different lead singer, but it's just, it's so amazing. Yeah. I remember when they opened the Academy Awards, they really like kicked, kicked ass. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. Great opening. yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's as much as I've uh, seen Queen <laughs> live. Uh, yeah, yeah. I really wish I had seen him back when I was young, but I think I was only like maybe 12 years old when I first started buying their records, and, um, you know, I would have been too young to go to a concert anyway. I don't really think they came around to where I lived uh, when I was growing up, but um, if I had gone, I definitely would have. Do <laughs> um, you have any questions you want to ask her? Uh, well, I guess related to Queen, what's your favorite Queen album? <laughs> My favorite Queen album? Yeah. Uh, Queen 2. All right. Yeah, favorite favorite song? Cool. Oh, favorite Queen song? Gosh, I don't know. That's always a tough one. <laughs> so I have probably a list of about 20 favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Narrow it down. To, um, so, so what is the uh, encore when Queen Nation plays? Uh, well, they're going to play in December, uh, the first weekend of December, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, so we're going to see them all three nights, of course. <laughs> Probably be really tired trying to go to work those two days, but I'll, I'll manage. What is that? What is their uh, encore song? What do they think is the big queen song? Oh, they they usually finish with um, they'll do "We Are the Champions," um, "We Will Rock You," and "Bohemian Rhapsody" at the end. Okay. Toward the end, you have to wait. They don't always make the same end, but um, now you're where are you seeing them? Isn't that uh, is it you know social distancing and all that or? How does that work? Yeah, yeah, it's got to be like that for now. So most of the shows we're going to see are like car concerts where you're in a parking lot and, um, you know, everyone's in the car or at least staying close to the car. And instead of applauding, if you're far in the back, you're honking, you know. Which is kind <laughs> of weird thing. Like, it's so weird because I thought that kind of concert cannot be fun. I refuse to go to one of those, you know. And then we went to one. And if you get in the front row, like if you make sure that you pay extra, yeah. Get your car up in the way front where you can actually wave at the band and scream, then, then it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so um, let's ask, I'll talk a little bit about Power Squared. Uh, you were nice enough, as I said, at the San Fernando Valley comic book convention yeah to actually come over to our table <laughs> one of the few people that yeah. actually did that was really nice of you um uh do you have a uh you i assume you've read the issues you've purchased i did and yeah i did and was, you guys even actually um autographed the, the first one i bought for you <laughs> <laughs> um which I thought was really cool. Okay, well, I appreciate, it was really cool you bought them. Uh, do you have a favorite issue in particular? Um, I don't know. I think I remember liking issue number seven, but I can't remember offhand why that was. Kirby? Um, Kirby Good and Evil? Yeah. No, yeah. That's the conclusion of that, isn't it? 
It might have been the one where Mocha was first introduced, and it's funny because we have a pet bunny named Mocha. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's I thought that's a coincidence. The whole thing struck me because my, my kids are twins, and you, you guys are twins, and then we have this bunny named Mocha, and I thought, this is all too weird. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it just sort of uh, worked out that way, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, we, um, is there, I don't know, any questions you want to ask us or anything like that? Is this too um, conversation? Actually, yeah, I was just kind of wondering because um, what did you guys, uh, I know that um, other than being college students, I mean, you guys have graduated now and you're, working besides doing the comic book, right? Well, I'm the father of the two, so... Um, right, I mean, yeah. I mean, all of yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a steady job, but uh, what do you guys... You mm -hmm. went to uh, graduate school after, or... Yeah, I... Uh, during the lockdown, I actually finished... Uh, uh, certificate program through UCLA Extension in fiction writing. Oh, cool. Uh, and there's another, uh, I'm able to right now get like a hundred, up to a hundred pages of a novel looked at. So I'm working on my second draft of that in order to take advantage of that. Oh, cool. And Trevor is doing, well, Trevor took some classes. Yeah, um, Trevor was taking classes uh, to try to get into uh, character design and animation, uh, but right now there aren't any art classes that he can take because of all the because of uh, the quarantine. So right. uh, there's this one class he was trying to take, but. It locked the lockdown hit right before he was going to be able to do that, so that's kind of on hold right now. Yeah, that's kind of throwing a wrench into a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what made you guys decide to do a comic book? Um, I assume this is the first one that you've started, right? Yes, yeah, the first. <laughs> Does it show? Yes, no. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I figured if you had other ones, you would have been selling them at the table oh, yeah. as well. <laughs> No, this is the first one. You want to tell her why we did one? And why did you decide to do that? Have you always been interested in comics? Uh, yeah, I've been interested. I've been interested in comics for a few years. Um, kind of a mixture of Marvel and DC. I think we decided to do a comic because we wanted to. Uh, we wanted to, kind of ex express the twin experience and uh that interest in comic books just kind of went with that that's cool yeah being a twin must be kind of unique i can't i don't know what that would be like but i know my kids are uh, they have a really unique connection between them being twins <laughs> yeah very they're very very close although sometimes they're you know, like this, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, yeah, definitely. Um, and now, um, do you have a favorite comic, or did you when you were growing up? Um, let's see, I got into comics. I want to say in high school. Does that yeah. sound right? Yeah. Or community college? No, it was high school. They opened the. Comic yeah. Book store. Um, my, the comic book I. There are actually two that I really liked, uh, Deadpool and uh, Scott Snyder's run on Batman. Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I haven't read either one, but I think Deadpool would probably be good. And uh, otherwise, I've been uh, really interested in manga to keep up with. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm old school. When I grew up, we had, like, uh, the Archie comic books. And uh, <laughs> what else did we have? Archie and, um, gosh, what were some of the other ones? I can't really remember, but, yeah, it was very, uh, very old school. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with superheroes that, that the girls read anyway, all my friends were the, the Archie ones and the little ones with animals or whatever. Yeah. 
now, what um, what do you guys like to do in your spare time? You and Trevor. Trevor's never on these uh, these podcasts or the videos or anything. Is he um, more shy or just more busy? <laughs> uh, he's, I guess, he's more camera shy. Yeah. Uh, okay. He's invited anytime he wants to be on. <laughs> but he opts out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm camera shy too, believe it or not. So I was telling my friends, I thought like, they were helping me set up the phone, and I was like, maybe it's only audio. Maybe I don't have to like show my face. Or <laughs> I think everyone's camera shy sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So now the adventures that you guys have in, in some of these issues with um uh going on dates with these different girls and stuff is that reflective of any of the the experiences that you've had like with dating a professor or a teacher or something that works with the school or is that all like made up and... uh well it's pretty much made up <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's personal. <laughs> no, it's yeah it's all it's all fiction uh, okay so Paula isn't the ladies' man in like that he's in the. In the, in the... <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't had. I'll admit I haven't had too much experience, but I've had more experience. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay. It's it's hard right now to meet anybody. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, people are afraid to, like, you know, do anything social at all. Now, is where you live, is the, um, is the coronavirus scare, like, more uh, now, or is it getting better? Like, I know in Orange County here, we've been pretty good, and now it's getting worse, so they're talking about closing some things, but we've got, like, restaurants open, all kinds of things open, um, for a while now. All right. So you guys live up in um, where we're, do you live exactly? We're in Van Nuys. Okay, so that's LA County. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. It's and part. It's part of Los Angeles. It's just a. Uh, oh. Okay. Just I thought you were farther for some reason. I thought you were like way up there. No. So, no. so you have a lot of things closed right now. Things you can't do. Well, you can't. Uh, you know, you can't. Well, I guess you can't eat at restaurants. You can't eat inside at restaurants. Um, I don't know anything about the bars being open. I don't usually, we don't usually go out to drink, so I can't tell yeah, you about yeah. that. Uh, well, on our, I suppose I was walk just to get exercise and I think the bar is, the bar kind of nearby is open, but you have to respect social distancing. Right. Yeah. Right. And there's, I guess most of the stores are open and things like that at the moment. I have a feeling things might be shutting down. Yeah, are... we were talking about that this morning, kind of scared of that. And, you know, me working at the post office right now, that's what I do for work. I, I deliver mail. So it's gotten super bad because no one's going shopping. And they're just ordering every single item and for us to deliver. And it's like crazy. People are working overtime and they're just going crazy with all the packages. And I thought, please don't shut down the stores. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that much overtime. I'm fine. <laughs> Um, we don't usually get political, but there was a lot of heat on the post office in the last few months. Has is, is that trickled down to you? I mean, have you felt anything change? Uh, no, not really. I mean, at first, a lot of people were talking about it, and the new postmaster was kind of under a lot of uh, scrutiny because he was appointed by Trump, and he was apparently going to do a lot of things that were really going to undermine our service because he he was an outsider who wasn't hired from within and so when you get somebody at that level who's never even delivered mail or worked in the post office before they have all these ideas that are like a little crazy so um yeah we we're a little worried about him but nothing's really directly happened to my level of work yet you know as a um, affected by that so um i don't know i just hope that it's they're going to stop in those tracks because he a lot of people are really against what he was trying to do. So you see, like, yeah, he was trying to undermine the whole <clears throat> the whole service. Yeah. Yeah, that's just political. Yeah. We don't really get political, but <clears throat> just that since you've had that experience, we should ask. 
<laughs> Anything else? Uh, I guess, uh, who's your favorite character in Power Square? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. Um, hmm. Definitely not Dr. Alice. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. He's, he's the villain, so that's good. <laughs> it would probably be Mocha, just because she she pops up everywhere, and she's kind of always got something different up her sleeve. She's, she's kind of one of my favorites. Oh, good. That's good. Good choice. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Um... No, I, we sent you uh, issue number 10. Have you had a chance to read it? Yes, I did. I got it right here. I printed it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming out at the end of the, at the end of November. So we just. Uh... Oh, good. So I'm the first one to have it. Yes. Will you guys autograph it for me again? <laughs> well, we, can, we can actually send you a real issue of it. That was. A... <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, see, I'm so old school. If I try to read it on my phone, I'd give myself a headache. So everything for me has to be on paper. Oh, yeah, no, I understand that, too. Very, very old-fashioned in that way. It's like, don't send me an e-card. You know, I want a card in the mail. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. yeah well, so this this be left me hanging a little bit with um with what's going to happen now after yeah. the big uh, explosion and explosion. So, so to be continued. That one, yeah, so I can't wait to see 11. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, we have we're working right now on issue sixteen, so eleven, and twelve are already done. So, oh, but you're not going to give me any hint what happens? No, because <laughs> <No. laughs> people don't want to read those things. So if they watch this and go, oh, I don't need to worry about it now. Okay. <laughs> um, anything else you want to talk about? Um, I don't know, really. Um, now, how much time, is your whole household kind of um, full of what you do with the comic book? Or is this, obviously it takes you guys a lot of time to write these things. Like, do you do it at a set time on the weekends or whatever after work? Or do you just come up with ideas and just, like, throw them around all the time? Or... Well, we're sort of going through um, some of these ideas have been around since near the beginning of doing this uh, comic book. Um, like issue 16, we realized the first draft was from like 2015. Yeah. So um, we kind of like write them up and then set, set them aside. And then when we kind of need to have, have them ready excuse me have them ready for our artists to work on then we kind of like a month or two ahead kind of bring them out and clean them up okay so um this is sort of something that i guess we're not we did we spent a, i think we spent a lot of time on the comic book even though we're not actively drawing it but yeah. it seems like every week or so there's you know like two or three nights we have to spend looking at stuff which is you know complain complain but um <laughs> You know, um, we're kind of at the, uh, I don't want to say at, at the mercy of the artist involved when, when she does the pages and we need to look at them, that kind of stuff. Yeah, because it, yeah, it's probably a lot of work to draw all that. Yeah. Just how you guys imagine it, right? Uh, yeah, and I, I think we're getting, you know, uh, don't, between you and me, I think we're getting a bargain on it, but uh, <laughs> it does seem like it takes a long time, but. Uh, yeah. She agreed to the price, so she stuck with it. Um, but uh, no, we're uh, it's 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 a fun experience. It's nice to you know work with you know Paul a lot on uh, looking at everything and writing stuff, and it's nice that you know Trevor is involved in the lettering because he's you know in house in family kind of a thing. Um, yeah. And we've been very happy with the you know the artwork we've been getting, and we have a new colorist. So that's been working out really well too. Yeah, which is sort of a friend of a friend of yours. Yeah, so it's been working out pretty well. It's kind of a, it's kind of our hobby, I guess. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it's not like you have a set time where you all sit down in the office and say, "Okay, we've got to get this issue done." Like, you know, brainstorming or whatever. Like a certain block of time every day, you just do it as it comes. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, 
um, and the office is the end of the end of the dining room table. So it's, like it's, a, it's like it's a major operation at all. Yeah, I'm very official, right? Well, good. Well, the issues always look great. I mean, they're so. I was impressed because the, the paper is nice, the the shininess, the color of the ink. I mean, I'm one of those people that's into paper and the way it looks and the way the texture of it and you know what i mean it's like a tactile experience when you read yeah. something oh yeah the, so yeah i'm with you i don't uh, like reading off the computer or anything like that so right and even low quality paper like when it seems like newspaper or flimsy it's like no 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 it's gotta be nice it's gotta be shiny smell good you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no but you want the whole yeah. experience yeah right yeah so i love reading crawling into bed and if i'm reading an issue i'm like yeah this is a good quality thing i'm reading it doesn't just <laughs> Because <laughs> if I fall asleep, we'll let, we'll let the printers know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we do appreciate your time, uh, and we may have you back on as a guest later. But we do appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Great. Well, thank you for having me on. Okay. And do you want to do a little outro? Uh, yeah. We'll do a little outro. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit that out when we actually put it up. Uh, if, you, <clears throat> if you're watching us on YouTube, if you like this, leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more. And ring the notification bell if you want to see exactly when these videos go up. Until next week, I'm David Hankins. And I'm Paul Hankins. And you've been on the air with Power Square.